are at the rarity of common. Yes, a little bit of an ode to the pauper community out there. All right, let's start off with, I think, one of the coolest cards in the format. Snuff out a black and three generic instant. If you control a swamp, you can pay four life instead of paying snuff out's mana cost. Destroy! Target non-black creature. It cannot be regenerated. I mean, this is... To some extent, some sort of like super, I don't know what to call this. this. It's not exactly the force of will of the format. It's just a free spell. This card is so good that it actually sees play in Legacy. Death Shadow decks love this card. Just nukes those Raghavans, those Murktide regions. Yeah, you can play all the days as you want. I've got the free mana open. It's not going to work because you've got the snuff out here. And there's not even days in the popper format now anyway. So snuff out, I think, is uh, not only a very unique common card, but it's just out probably the best, one of the better removal spells even in the game. Uh, because it can see play in not only in popper, but also legacy. Oh, Eden here. That's a bomb. That is a huge one. Dark Ritual. This card, this card is so good. It's ban banned in Historic and actually has not, they're never going to make it legal in Modern. Never going to make it legal in Modern. This thing is basically locked up in Legacy. I can't even believe it's fair in Legacy. One black, add black, black, black to your mana pool. And do whatever you want with it. You can cast creatures, you can cast spells, do whatever. You, generally speaking, you're casting spells lot more spells see what feels a lot of the combo decks in uh feels a lot of combo decks in legacy uh i have hit the old dark ritual hypnotic specter a lot of people talk about that combo it basically shows people's age uh when they talk about the hypnot the dark ritual hypnotic specter days this is this was like you know this was the thing you feared when they played Dark Ritual. <gasps> they're not afraid of any Dijins or vampires. No, they're afraid of the Spectre. Flying when Hypnotic Spectre deals damage to an opponent. That player discards a card at random. It scarred so many people for life. All right, so Dark Ritual. Uh, basically, uh, a staple of any Storm deck, combo decks. I don't know if Popper uses this fairly. You're going to have to let me know the applications to the Dark Ritual in popper in the description below uh what else do we have here would legacy banning dark ritual make reanimator too slow probably it's already like in an okay spot that reanimator deck it's not too overpowering whatever it's it's in a good spot the amount of times i turn one ter uh turgrid is surprisingly a lot all right him to Tarok. And I have only one question. Is that a common? It's got to be if you mentioned it. Ah, let's see. Uh, ah, it's so it's so common. It's banned in Popper. <laughs> you, can't, you can't play this one. Oh, yeah, this is one of those cards. And I'm like, why is this banned in Popper? This is, this is really not that good. Yeah, you can discard two cards at random. But what, and I guess you can ritual it out. I guess that's something you could do. So leaving the ritual behind, but him to Tarog, no, 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 that's no good. No, 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 don't touch my lands. Don't touch my lands in hand. It's going to be random. You're going to get mana screwed. Probably. Probably said somebody who uh, got him to Tarog in Legacy or something. This is a very good card at common. It's, but I mean, it's... You know, it's not Sinkhole, you know, which is another card that's been mentioned here. Underground Fan Club, Sinkhole. Still in disbelief that this card is a common. Black, black, destroy target land. That's pretty good. I mean, that's not bad, especially on the play. But, uh, okay, so, but, like, him, this is, a, this is a very good card. I'm just surprised it's very, it's banned. It's definitely one of the more powerful cards. It's a two for one. So long as your opponent still has cards in hand. That stupid cat with the stupid oven. Cauldron familiar it is.
This cat is, yeah, this cat is seeing play everywhere. A black 1-1. One, one. When Cauldron Familiar enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. And you gain one life! It's actually, the, the stats on that as it is are not bad. Sacrifice of food. Return Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard back to the battlefield. And it was in sort of an infamous combo with um, Witch's, uh, Witch's Oven, I think? Thank God that thing is not popper legal. Uh, one mana artifact, tap, sacrifice a creature, create a food token. If the sacrifice creature's toughness was four or greater, create two food tokens instead. Okay, well, the cat is not that big, all right? We're not going to do it. We're, it's not worth a whole lot of food, okay? It's not a beefy. It's a little scrawny little thing. The thing is a stray. It's been eating scraps from the Planeswalker's garbage. Anyway, so Cauldron Familiar is actually uh, one of the better commons in the game because it combos so well with uh, Witch's Oven. Hey, <laughs> Oubliette! Oubliette! One of the weirder cards. Oubliette. This just got a reprint, right? And like the original card... Okay, let's let's read the original card. No, we gotta go to the original, original card. Get this. It's like basically a removal spell in black that exiles. Okay, so black... So we're gonna go back to the past. What Oubliette used to do. And we're gonna go to what Oubliette does today. It has changed historically. So black, black, one generic. It's an enchantment. Select a creature in play when Oubliette is cast. That creature is considered out of play as long as Oubliette is in play. Hence, the creature cannot be the target of spells and cannot receive damage using special powers, attack, or defend. All counters and enchantments on the creature remain but are also out of play. If Oubliette is removed, creature returns to play tapped. It's had, it's had quite a history here. Now, let's see its makeover. Let's see the the, the oubliette that it is today. Uh, okay, a little bit more the oubliette that it is today. Black, black, one generic. When oubliette enters the battlefield, target creature phases out until oubliette leaves the battlefield. Tap that creature as it phases in this way. Why was that important? I guess you okay so it's like an exile thing and then if you get rid of the oubliette you'll you're gonna get your creature back but it's coming to play phase tap so you can attack with it wow that's broken uh just got here did we go over the witches i don't know what the witches are uh you gotta help me here Oh, all of the witches? Are these all really good cards? Black for generic. Uh, when borrow witches enter the battlefield, return to her night card from your from your graveyard to your hand. There's actually I am surprised for a game called Magic the Gathering. There's not that many witches. Uh, Kumbaya witches, black black one three tap deals one damage to any target and one damage to any target of an opponent's choice. It's a bit of a weird one. And then Dream Spoiler Witches. Black, three generic. Also popper legal. Two, two, flying. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, you may have target creature get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Knight's Whisper. Oh, yes. This actually... Okay, this card is so good that this card plus effects very similar to this card actually see play in modern. Black one generic, you draw two cards and you lose two life. Hey, who doesn't want to draw two cards? That's why... That's why... What's it called? Um, Thought cast sees so much play in affinity and it's only a single blue draw two cards. So drawing two cards from one card is still value. Also, hold on, isn't there, like, one where you can target your opponent? Sign in blood. Yes. Black, black. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. But the advantage here is you can be sinister. You can draw the cards or your opponent can draw the cards and lose the two life. Oh, you're at one or two life? Ha! Huh. Why don't we uh, sign that one in blood, shall we? 
Oh, thank you so much, Broman, for the super chat. Bone picker. Oh, is that the... It's the Black Delver. The Black Delver, the bird. So black, three generic, three, two creature, flying death touch. That is a very evil bird. But the spell costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. So you could go, you could do a little, your, your snuff out. Do a little snuff out action on a creature without having to spend any mana. You could, oh, you could turn one this easily. Your opponent plays like a mana dork, snuff it out, bone picker. Boom. Easy peasy. Good game. Actually, well, I mean, the game's not over. The game's afoot. But, like, you know, he, your opponent has a flying death touch delver on the battlefield. It's not pleasant. The blue the blue decks can't even block this thing very well. But they're puny 1-1 one, one spell stutter sprite and fairy miscreants and so on. The fairy seer. Completely outmatched by a bone picker. Carlos with the super chat. Uh, hey man, sorry I missed out on Commander Hot Takes 1. Hot Take, I believe 100% that we should bring back Band as Commander and Band in the 99. That is a great take. I don't know if that's that hot of a take. A lot of people just want to see that come back. Why isn't there Band with Commander back? What happened to that? Bone Picker is unfortunately worse as it, uh, as it seems. I don't think I've ever seen it being meta played. Well... Whatever. It's going to be played in our hearts. <laughs> Is any decks vulnerable to this? I guess... Maybe Neoform? No, probably not. They probably combo off if they have one card left in their deck. Um, maybe Dredge. Dredge, maybe. Would uh, could be at risk. Maybe at risk of dying. You're at one card left. Please sign here on the dotted line. Sign in blood there. Yeah, that's funny. Ah, we've got another super chat. But wait, there's more. Him to Turok and Mind Stab Thrall. We didn't check out Mind Stab Thrall yet. I have a feeling this, uh, this Coffin MTG is going to be about getting through every single black common in existence. Black, black, one generic for a 2 2 creature. When Mind Stab Thrall attacks and it isn't blocked. You may sacrifice it. If you do, defending player discards three cards. Holy crap. Wow. You know, him to Tarak, step aside. We've got the mind stab thrall. Whatever you have in your hand, you're basically binning it. It's not even going to come back. I didn't even know this card exists. And you're in black, so you're easily going to clear the way. You've got the removal. That's what the That's what the deck is supposed to do. Oh my god. Disgusting. Uh, Alright, Tortured Existence. Thank you so much for the super chat, Wa. A must for any Seer Conrad deck. Tortured Existence. By the way, this might give a lot of people some budget ideas, you know. This is not all ideas just for popper. It's just, well, actually, some of these comments you're going to find out are expensive. Tortured Existence, a black enchantment for a black choose and discard a creature card return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand the utility of this thing is insane i could discard my bone picker and get i don't know okay i could i could discard my bone picker where's my bone picker i i lost it and then go get my ma mind stab thrall and do it all over again because after all i just sacrificed the poor the poor fool just join. What's the verdict on the cat? Oh, you mean Cauldron Familiar? It's busted. That's our that's our take on the cat. It's completely busted. At the target player draws X, make Thassa sad. That's right. But unfortunately, it's a source. It's sorcery speed. I've killed people uh, to sign in blood in draft multiple times. It's that good. That's exactly what it does. I imagine in draft sometimes you could mill them out too. Stubfinger, feed the swarm. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, of course. One black, one generic sorcery. Destroy target creature or enchantment. An opponent controls. You lose life equal to that per permanent mana value. This card made people angry. As weird as that sounds. Like, black shouldn't have enchantment removal. What? Uh, what uh, what's up with that? That's not a black thing to do. 
They're supposed to be weak to enchantments. Anyway, do you believe they should be weak to enchantments? Will you let me know as I announce today's sponsors? Starting with FusionGamingOnline.com, my one-stop shop for all my pa paper magic cards. I have to be prepared for my big magic events. I'm going to Vegas, and I'm already building my paper modern deck. I need the singles because... Um, the modern's changing big time. Modern is absolutely changing big time. Thanks to Dominary United. Thank you so much for the hex catcher, Dominary United. It was an excellent contribution to the Merfolk deck. And if you want to get your hex catchers or anything at all from Dominary United, singles sealed product, don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online for you to play test all the new decks that are coming out in every single format. When there's a new set, you want to be at the forefront of the innovation and you can when you're renting the decks with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore B2Q. And one final announcement. People are like, Nikachu, don't you play the game anymore? What happened to the gameplay videos? I made a new YouTube channel called Nikachu Plays MTG. The first video is already up. We got one video, more to come. And I intend on making this like my mono blue sanctuary. I want to play everything mono blue or blue-ish. Popper, popper fairies, mono blue merfolk. That's what, that's what speaks to me. Link to that new channel, get subbed to that, is also in the description below. All right, let's get back to Feed the Swarm. What do we think about Feed the Swarm? Do we think anything at all? Okay, what do we got? Exhume is also an amazing card. Oh my god! That's a common? You, you, got, you gotta be kidding me! That is that is that is a common black one generic each player puts a creature card from their graveyard onto the battlefield The trick is getting the creature in the graveyard in the first place. So everyone gets a card Everyone gets something I Mean, uh, that's legacy playable. I mean, that's bit this is this is why they call popper legacy because we're just going over tons of legacy staples that can be seen in popper If you say exhume, you gotta unearth too. All right. You got a bub. Yeah, that also is a common one. Black return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I'm not as much in love with this one because you can't get the big, big beefy fatties, the super fatties. It's a super here, a super chat here. Thank you very much, Arkea. I appreciate your 99 cents. Did you have a did you have a comment though? supposed to super chat with and say something at the same time that's okay exhume was a common in urza saga <laughs> you know back then in urza saga they didn't know how to evaluate these cards they just didn't know how to evaluate the power level of their cards or maybe they wanted to make this common because they knew that the artifact strategies were just going to be ridiculous all right, what do we got next? We got Tainted Strike. My Queen Onyx. What do we got here? Black target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains infect until end of turn. So any black deck is suddenly an infect deck. One shot, one kill. Ooh, Raven's Crime. Well, where did I see that? I don't know where, oh, here we go. We got the Underground Fan Club. This card is a staple in uh, Modern, actually, for the 8-rack deck. They don't have quite, do they have 8-rack in Popper? Uh, I don't know if any of the cards are legal. Well, probably, I don't know if they do or not. But anyway, Raven's Crime, Black, uh, Sorcery, Target Player discards a card, and then you can retrace it. You can cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. So, if you like your opponent to perpetually have nothing in hand, this is the card for you. Because it, it will, once your opponent gets down to that, like, 
one to two cards left in their hand, you don't need to duress them anymore. You don't need to thought seize them anymore. You just Raven's Crime. It's all going straight into the graveyard. Okay, so uh, Dre assumes correctly. I assume you all hit Dark Ritual. So how about Songs of the Damned? One black. Add a black for each creature card in your graveyard. I have never heard of this. Never heard of this. And it was originally printed in Ice Age. I personally like the new picture more than the old picture. Instant black. How many people knew this card even existed? I'm just trying to figure out which deck can utilize this the best. You can't, like, it's not broken on the earlier turns of the games, but it can be useful in the later stages of the game to help ramp out a really big, large creature. So you let your earlier creatures die, and then boom, you, like, come over the top with a lot of mana late in the game. There is a deck that uses this with cycling creatures and can turn to imp- Oh! Of course! We can never think of people using rituals in a fair way. It's always got to be the storm players ruining it for everyone. Yeah, there's a there's a cycle storm deck in Popper. Totally forgot about that. All right, we got I saw a million times village rights. Yes, yeah, Evan. All right, village rights. You village rights people, you're like a cult. The people who play, there's like people who play village rights might as well have their own Facebook group. I swear. Same thing with Unearth. You unearth people. The unearth Facebook group. Share all your deck lists that play with unearth. And, and then the village rights group has the same thing. One black instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. I have found in practice this is a bit of a cute card. Like You don't really want to use it proactively. But I think on defense, this thing's amazing. Because if your opponent's going to kill your creature anyway... Prismatic Ending, Fatal Push, Snuff Out, for example. You just sacrifice the creature in response to with Village Rites, and you draw two cards. It's, a, it's basically a three for one, because you hit the removal spell. The removal spell is useless, and, um, and then you drew, drew two cards. It's a very sweet three for one. And, you know, of course, in the decks where it matters, uh, where you want to be sacrificing your creature, it's just value from there. Okay, this one I like. I like this one. I like it a lot. Gurmog Angler. Gurma, black and six generic. 5-5 five, five Delve creature. This card unfortunately got displaced in modern by Murktide region, but it was the de facto creature to like push out after you filled up your graveyard. You built that whole graveyard up for that big fish. It's the only way you can wrangle this thing. You gotta fill its swamp full of garbage. If everything, if everything in the Gurmog swamp hungers for human flesh, what bait could be more effective? Yes, human flesh it is. Uh, Seize plain popper though. It's part of the blue-black popper deck. You fill up your graveyard, then you Gurmog this thing out, and then uh, difficult to kill. It's not easy to kill a five-five creature, especially if it's supposed you're supposed to like. There's a lot of removal that cares about converted mana cost, and this one has a super high one, so. This is a really nice card for common. Uh, what else do we got here? Millmaster with the super chat. Diabolic Edict. Darkness. Oh, we're only going to give you one. We're going to go with the first one. Diabolic Edict. That's my rule. If you, I, I mean, it's good actually to announce a few just in case we've gone over some. But otherwise, there's a lot of super chats. They just all they monopolize the show off of one super chat. Black one generic instant target player sacrifices a creature. Debatably, one of the best removal spells actually in the game. It was the only. It was one of the only things that kept true name nemesis in check. Uh, maybe not everyone was there in Legacy when True Name Nemesis was first printed, but a lot of people just said, oh, this warps the format, you gotta ban it out of existence, it's un it's unbeatable, because you choose a player, and it's always gonna be your opponent, it's protection from, it's Progenitus, Mini Progenitus 3-1, Tiny Progenitus with legs getting in there, holding swords and all sorts of other crap. Turns out there was a simple, clean answer, Diabolic Edict, a lot of decks played black in Legacy. And uh, easy, clean, 
clean way of beating that true name. <laughs> it's I will... Uh, I saw something from Millmaster. I will monopolize nothing. Oh, Carrion Feeder. One of the best zombies. For, arguably the best zombie in the game. Black 1-1. One, one, a zombie. Uh, can't block. Okay, so... You can't be good at everything. But you can sacrifice a creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Carrion Feeder. This... I mean, the... The deal is this, sacrificing a creature for nothing, for zero mana, that's not common. Usually it requires some sort of tap, some sort of activated ability, so there's a limited number of times you can sacrifice creatures in play. Uh, but Carrion Feeder basically says for as long as you have creatures in play, you can sacrifice them. That creates combos. I'm not gonna name all the combos, let me know your favorite. My favorite combos is like sacking a bunch, this is not really a combo, but... This is my fa this is the, my favorite thing to do. So when the opponent is low enough, you get some Gralf's messengers in there. Enters the battlefield tap, but when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life and as in dying. And then uh, sack them, sack a few of them to the carrion feeder, and uh, they're dead. That's the plan. Get their life total low enough, low and dead, dead and good. Gage with Chainer's Edict. I remember this. Chainer's Edict was like $10 at one time. Oh, that's I've never seen that picture before. I'm familiar with the uh, the old-fashioned one. Black one generic target player sacrifices a creature, but it's got flashback, like so. Don't let the game go too long because once the opponent gets to seven mana, they can uh, they can cast it again, and you have to sacrifice a creature again. You gotta do it all over. Uh-oh. True name nemesis. It's just uh, you know, in pain all over again. Ooh, fairy macabre. That's a good call. Another card that is so good that it sees legacy play. Black, black, one generic, two, two, flying. Discard fairy macabre. Exile up to two target cre two target cards from graveyards. This actually could see play in any format. This is such such good useful utility against any reanimator deck. It, it, it hit, it's mostly for hitting the graveyard decks. So I wouldn't say you can main deck this type of card, but it's still very, very good. Witherfang take on Chainer's Edict. Chainer's Edict was never printed at Common, but it was Common on Magic the Gathering Online. Therefore, it's Popper Legal. There you go. A history lesson from Witherfang. Actually, you know what, Witherfang? I would say you know a lot of tri you know like a lot of trivia. You know a lot of the, a lot of little stuff surrounding the cards and the game. Okay, we got the begging. We got begging in the chat. Please, please, please look at fungal infection. That sounds disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Okay, it looks better than it sounds. Actually, the pawn looking. Nah, it's okay. Ugh, okay, it is disgusting. Okay, black. Instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Create a one, one green sapling creature token. That's pretty sweet. So there's a lot of creatures that die at one toughness. Uh, you know them all. Hell, even Raghavan dies these days at one toughness. And you get a little one, one green sapling creature token. You get a little bit of value there. Actually, this is a really sweet card. Didn't know this card existed. We got Queen Onyx here. Phyrisis is another one of my favorites. Phyresis. What do we got here? <laughs> you know, it, you know, when you super chatted, I'm like, is this gonna be another infect card? Phrysis. Black one generic enchant creature. It has infect. You just infect people out of nowhere, dude. You just got this big 10-10 creature, and then everyone's like, oh, I have 40 life, no big deal. Frissus, you dead. Okay, do we got did we do this one? Donald says Cole the Week. Cole of the Week. A lot of good cards at common. Uh oh, Cull of the Week. No, Cull the Week. What what is this? No, this is Cull. Cull the Week. What am I am I doing? Why am I doing this wrong? There we are. Culling of the... 
Do we have- do we need to have this discussion where you gotta give me the exact name? Or please give it close? Okay, there we go. Wow, I actually got it. Okay, calling of the week. What is- what is going on here? We've got a, uh, black... For a mana source, whatever the hell that is. Okay, an inst- <laughs> It's an instant. Uh, sacrifice a creature. Add black, 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 black to your mana pool. Holy moly! Is this also played in that in that cycling deck? I guess they could pl they can play a cycling creature and sacrifices for four black mana. Should be easy enough. Should be no problem. God, that's a lot of mana. It's very rare. You see black, 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 black. You can play your Frex and Obliterator off of this thing. Next ritual to check out is Cabal. Oh, the Cabal ritual. I know this ritual. The ritual of all rituals. Black, one generic, an instant. Add black, it's, you know, black, black, black to your mana pool. But if you have threshold, which we, you would do if you were playing a storm deck or a combo deck of some sort, add black, 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 black to your mana pool. If you missed how many times I said that, I see yeah, it. I said that five times. Absolutely disgusting card. I guess this is why they don't really police the rituals in Popper. They're just like, do whatever you want with them. There's just too many rituals at common. Basically, is half the format at this point. Storm player's wet dream over here. Deadly dispute. Is that a... Will I be damned? Oh, yeah. This is a really hot card right now, isn't it? Black one generic. has an additional... As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature. And it's at instant speed. So again, if the opponent attacks your creature with removal, you just go, pop, it's gone. I was willing to sacrifice it anyway. Draw two cards and create a treasure token. That's actually quite a bit busted. I actually think this is a lot better than village rights, in a sense. This uh, treasure token thing is really busted. Cranial plating. I will die on this hell. Oh, you were trying to get that one in? Cranial plating. Oh, <laughs> it's, this is an artifact. It's not even black around the border. I don't know. It's like a virtual black card because it's got a mana cost of black. I don't think I don't think that flies anywhere though. It is good though. It's very very strong. One of the it is one of the strongest commons in the game though. Van oh, vampire's kiss. Have you ever been kissed by a vampire? Black one generic sorcery. Target player loses two life and you gain two life. And then you create two blood tokens. Artifacts that can be sacrificed later. Or filter your lands for better, better stuff. Gary! Gray merchant. Of Asphodel. Black, back th black, black, three generic. Two, four. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life. Or X is your devotion to blacks. So you must be devoted. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. And when you chain the Garys together. Oh, it's ridiculous. This guy has so much money. He's leaking money. He's just draw. He's what? He's, he must be. Ha he must have the amount of wealth like Bill Gates. Did anyone see that joke about Bill Gates? If he'd like drop $10,000 by accident. It'd be, it'd be in his best interest to just leave it there and just keep moving forward towards whatever meeting he was going to. That's like this guy right now, just dumping tons of money, falling out of... Who's hiding money in, like, pillow sacks, though? What is the point of that? And that's got to be so heavy. There's no way he's lifting this. Oh, well, whatever. It's magic, right? It's magic. The guy's just really strong. All right, what else do we have? Uh, there is another... Oh, Relentless Rats. The real, really, the real question is, how many Relentless Rats can you play in your deck? How many can you run? A deck can have any number of cards named Relentless Rats. Would that make this, like, the cheapest commander deck possible? Just a bunch of swamps and a bunch of Relentless Rats and then some... I don't know, 
mono black commander. Black, black, one generic for a 2-2, and it gets plus one, plus one for each other rat on the battlefield named Relent Relentless Rats. It's like playing, uh... Oh, what's that rat that makes rats for three mana? It's another Relentless Rats. That, that's the real Relentless Rats, to be honest. Oh, someone help me here. What's the... There's... It was a, it was a house in Standard, but didn't quite see play in Modern. And it basically plays like a Relentless Rats, but it's an activated ability instead. There is a commander from Kamigawa that would work with him. Pack Rat. That's what I was thinking of. Pack Rat. It plays like Pack Rat. This is the real Relentless Rats. This is absolutely Relentless. You just keep... You, you never can get rid of this damn creature. And back then, like, once you have a pack rat in play, you just kept making pack rats for forever. Anyway, Relentless Rats. Shadowborn Apostle is a bit too good. There we go. Shadowborn Apostle. Black, 1-1. One, one. A deck can have any number of cards named Shadowborn Apostle. Black. Sacrifice six creatures named Shadowborn Apostle. Search your library for a demon creature card. Put onto the battlefield and shuffle. So, like, what do you do? What's the demon you go get? I'm not quite sure. I guess you could... I guess what you can do as a mono black deck is just sandbag your hand, wait till you have seven mana up, and then boom! Six sh <laughs> Shadowborn Apostle. Shadowborn Apostle. Shadowborn Apostle. Shadowborn Apostle. You know, you get, you know, you do the whole, you can make it all as dramatic as you want. You get them all six in play, sack them all, and then you go get your demon. The demon you get is Razaketh. That's the combo, is it? The Foul-Blooded for a bazillion mana. Although I get the sense, like, if I could cast all those Shadowborn Apostles on one turn, then probably uh, this I could cast this thing on one turn as well. Flying Trample, pay two life, sacrifice another creature, suit your library for a card, and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. This actually looks like a pretty crappy payoff, to be honest, but whatever. I don't know if this was worth six Shadowborn Apostles. I think Grizzlebrand is one of the better ones. But, like, good luck finding a format where you can play it. Gr uh, Grizzlebrand is going to be extinct. Uh, Disciple of the Vault. You like that? I pronounced Disciple correctly. I don't know why I was calling it Disciple for the longest time. Of the Vault. Disciple of the Vault. Black 1-1, one, one. whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may have a target opponent lose one life. Banned in Popper. Sees no play in Modern. Because it is pointless. Actually, well, I wouldn't say it's pointless. It's a, it's a strong card, but it needs the right home for it. I'm surprised, like... What's it called? Uh, maybe not surprised, but Hardened Scales would be the best deck to utilize this. But I guess they it's just a win more card. I mean, if you're sacrificing a bunch of stuff in Hardened Scales, you probably have won the game. You've probably won the game already. Because you're just going to put all the counters onto an Ink Moth Nexus or something, and boom! Victory. Very good with the treasures. Disciple was banned in standard. It was banned in standard. They, ba they Back then, they banned everything in standard. Yeah, those were... It was another Urza saga. And again with the artifacts. It's like, it's hard to... It's hard to balance artifacts. I've got a hint for Wizards of the Coast. Stop printing them at like 1 and 0 mana. I mean, that's what makes them broken, essentially. Did we look at duress? Yeah, I don't think we've looked at duress. This is like, this is an oldie but a goldie. Black, sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non non-land card from it. That player discards a card. And I think, oh my God, this card's actually legal everywhere. Look at that. I've never seen a card so green here. Every format it's legal. You can even play it in Penny, it's crazy. Alright, a multi-format all-star, sort of. 
maybe. Uh, black, yeah, so uh, is this the first hand disruption? Like, you get to look at their hand and actually choose something? I think, but I, I might be wrong. Eduardo with the super chat. Thank you so much. Mortician Beetle. More the Mortician Beetle. Be Beetle, yes. Black one one. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you can put a counter on more uh, on Mortician Beetle. So whenever a player sacrifices a creature, so this is a good combo with Carrion Feeder. Great combo. This is a match made in heaven. You sack the creatures, make the carrion feeder bigger, make the mortician beetle bigger. You don't look at duress. Duress looks at you. Absolutely, Eden. Yes, I think it was the first of its kind. It Okay, so going back to duress, this set into... This set down a path of duress into Thoughtsees, into Inquisition of Kozilak, into all sorts of other stuff. Ended up being becoming the next Force of Will for Black. Or not, yeah, the, essentially a Force of Will, because, like, it ne I think there needed to be more than just blue dealing with the combo decks, and hand disruption was the key. Unmat Unmask is rare, right? Pretty sure Unmask is, yeah, not legal in Pop. Tainted Strike. Oh, we saw this one already. <laughs> we saw this one already. Uh, vampire's bike bite for the infect. Are they are they hungry? Black instant kicker for a black and two generic. Target creature gets plus three plus zero until end of turn. That's not bad. Not bad for a pump spell. If vampire's bite was kicked, that creature gains life link until end of turn. That's also convenient. Oh, Street Raid, that's a sweet one. Oh, that's a great one, Roderick. Black, black, three generic for a 3-4 Swamp Walker cycling pay to life. This is a great card, great design. Some people even believe that this card is broken because it turns 60 card decks into 56 card decks. I think those people are crazy. But outside of that, this has a lot of synergy with graveyard strategies. I guess it would go into that storm cycling storm deck. So you help fill your graveyard. But it's like it is just castable as a creature. And it's a pretty relevant 3-4 creature. I love it when you get into the late game and someone just hard cast that street wraith. And it has swamp lock, so it might as well be true name nemesis to some other decks. Burning Paper Sun, thank you so much for the super chat. Divest. I divest. Let's look at divest. Uh, target player reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature card from it. That player discards that card. That came from Dominaria. This is a pretty recent one. Reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature card from it. That player discards that card. Unfortunately, pushed out from... Uh, uh, pushed out because of better hand disruption in the uh, more other eternal formats, but for Popper, it is quite good. Oh, Corrupt. That's a Pro Tour play. That's a Pro Tour card. Corrupt. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, mind you. It's not cheap. It's a black and five generic for uh, sorcery. Corrupt deals damage equal to the number of swamps you control to target creature or player. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. Basically a match made in heaven with uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. That Grey Merchant looks pretty corrupt. Let's go back. This guy is corrupt. Stealing this, this and all, I still find this is weird. Why is the money in this like potato sack or, or pillows? It's really bizarre to me. Uh, okay, we got Dark. Darkstar says, The Vintage Masters version of Scourge Familiar is one of my favorite black commons. Scourge Familiar. And for you, we're going to look at the Vintage Masters one. You! This is disgusting. It's very old. Uh, this has got that... Yeah, I was about to say it's that old... It's that Urza Saga era art. Okay, so you like the Vintage Masters version the best. 3-2 Flyer. Discard a card, add a black to your mana pool. Sweet card. 
Everyone coming in a black common card. Well, I mean, it says in the title. It's not a black card. I'm not touching it. Tendrils of Corruption? The hell is this? Oh, it's instant speed. Deals X damage to target creature, and you gain X life. With X is the number of swamps you control. Is there, like, mono black swamp control somewhere? Mikey says, Gary is higging the money from the Theros Taxing Authority. You would know, Mikey J. You would know. Oh, that is a great one. Innocent blood. Not so innocent. Could go into that mono swamp control. One black sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature. Let's both do this. You lose a creature, I lose a creature. My creature isn't going to be so bad. Vendetta. That's a classic. I can't remember. Someone mentioned, like, this card should see more play right now. Uh, instant black. Destroy target non-black creature. It can't be regenerated. You lose life equal to that creature's toughness. It's a bit nasty. Especially if you try to kill something that's very, very big. But uh, it is a one mana re removal spell. But doesn't hit the black creatures. Shambling Ghast. A Ben as Lefty Club. It's a Shambling Ghast. Oh, this is a nice new one. This is a strictly better version of something else. Black 1-1. One, one. When it dies, choose one. Target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, which is pretty sweet. Or search the body. Create a treasure token. It's an... Yeah, you just create a treasure token. Good stuff. A lot of black popper staples. Well, you would imagine if you're playing the best popper cards, they are going to see play in popper. Encroach? I've never heard of this one. Oh, no. Before we go, another the good thing is this thing's a zombie, so. Go in that zombie tribal deck. Okay, Encroach. What are you doing? Millmaster, you know that gift you gave me in that box? My cat just burrowed himself right in it. I didn't throw the box out. What are you doing? Okay, I'll just leave him. He seems to be having a good time. All right, so anyway. Uh, what are we doing here? Uh, look at target player's hand and choose a non-basic land card from it. That player discards a card. Oh, this is so it was start the duress was starting to get out of control. They knew they are going to print a lot of hand disruption. Can you hear the burrowing? He's like ruffling around. There's all that extra paper stuff in the box. Plague Stinger. That's a good one. Plague Stinger. Black one generic with Infect. Excellent for any Infect deck. Make sure you're flying. You have Infect and Popper? That is disgusting. Are there any other infect cards? Yeah, so flying an infect. Yeah, more infect. I mean, you have a whole... You can, so for commons, you can make a whole inf entire infect deck. I, I, that's probably why infect is so popular among new players. It's like, what can I build that's really powerful and is very cheap? I want it budget. I'd want to spend any money on this deck. And they realize, oh, these, all these infect cards are cheap. And the pump spells are also basically free. I have a whole, I have a super powerful combo deck for like $5. Calentara says pestilence. Pe or pe pestilence. Pestilence. Can't remember what this is. Is this the, uh... Ah, uh, yes. At the end of turn, if there are no creatures in play, sacrifice Pestilence. Pay a black. Pestilence deals one damage to each creature and each player. I think this is the closest you guys have to a board wipe in Popper. I think it's the closest. And it's common in uh, Urza Saga. Deals one damage to each creature and each player. I think that is the closest there is to, like, uh, there's not many sweepers. Not many good ones, anyway. The Frexian Rager. Isn't that just like... Hold on, let me guess. This is ETB, you lose a life and draw a card or something like that? 
maybe you lose two life and draw? No, I think it's just one life, you draw a card. When Frexian Rager enters the battlefield, you draw a card, you lose one life, and you got a little bit of a Frexian horror body while you're at it. Crypt Rats is better, says Chris. What are the Crypt Rats? There must be a rat de Oh, I see. This is better than Pestilence. Black 2 generic for a 1-1. One, one. You have to pay X. Crypt Rats deals X damage to each creature and each player. Spend only black mana on X. I remember in my first Popper tournament I ever played. I did play in a Popper tournament once. I don't even remember what I was playing. There was this uh, rat deck that absolutely destroyed me. Somehow they had this rat out and they kept activating the rat. And I kept losing my stuff, but they didn't lose anything. I guess they ha must have had a rat lord out or something. Because all my stuff kept dying. If I remember correctly. And I couldn't, I just couldn't do anything. This, this rat thing just destroyed me. Crypt Rats is cute with lifelink. Rat colony? Let's build the rat deck, people. Tell me all your favorite rats. Black, one generic. That's plus one, plus zero for each other rat you control. A deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. It's not a bad, it's not a bad raid either. Protection from, did it have protection from black? My opponent gave it protect, maybe that's how it worked. I can't remember how the hell that thing kept staying on the board. Typhoid rats. Remember, it has to be in common. Death touch, just a 1-1. One, one. Oh, it's just a 1-1. One, one. There's nothing incredibly special. Neil Spellbomb is an artifact, people. Uh, Burnt Offering. Never heard of this one. Burned Offering. So one black. Sacrifice a creature to add that creature's casting cost in any combination of red and or black mana to your mana pool. That is pretty sweet. That is not bad. And we've got a super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Zazo Joe. Diabolic Edict is a good one. It is, but we looked at that one already. But I'll look at it again just for you. The True Name Slayer. Because without this, true name, no, true name Nemesis might have taken over Legacy, actually. It might, that might have been a thing. The fact that you get this out on turn two is pretty relevant. Uh, just joined. Did we do Apostle of the Crypt yet? I don't think so. Apostle of the Crypt. Never heard of it. Waiting. Zero cards called up. Did I spell it wrong? I might have spelled this wrong. Sorry about that. Okay, King Ginger, really desperate to get Defile in this one. Defile, what the hell is Defile? Black. Oh, we did this one. Oh no, we didn't do this one. Uh, target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control. That is great! That's a Modern Horizons card right there. That is a very, very strong card. No, we didn't do Defile. Actually, we didn't do Defile. We did Snuff Out, though. Oh, Bone Shards! I like the value from Bone Shards. Or I like the synergy, I should say. For one black, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature or discard a card, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Blows up planeswalkers, which is not particularly relevant in Popper. Not a single planeswalker at common. Not yet, at least. Anyway, yeah, that's a good one. Ideally, you put some, you sack a creature that you want to sack, or you discard a card you want in the graveyard. Ooh, I like that tragic slip. I gotta show you guys this. Hold on, hold on. Where's my, uh... I made... I made a bunch of altars. Where's my tragic slip altar? Oh, how long ago did I make this? Hope I didn't delete it. Hold on, I'm going to my... Where is it? 
I can't find it. Damn it. I made a Fall Guys, like, altar of Tragic Slip, and it was, you know, it was them falling. I've been playing a lot of Fall Guys lately. Great game. I'm sad that I didn't get into that game a lot earlier. Oh, I can't find my altar. No, that's okay. Maybe another time. Fall Guys for the win. Uh, we got Joseph here on Facebook. Reckoner's Barger. Bargain. Reckoner's Bargain. Uh, which is black one generic. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature. You gain life equal to the sacrifice permanence mana value and you draw two cards. There's a lot of these cards, you know, in addition to the casting the spell sack a creature or an artifact and you draw cards but the fact that you can sack artifacts are broken because you know, there's blood tokens are really easy to get really easy to get and who cares about the life you just want the cards yeah please note most cards being suggested now are have been analyzed earlier yeah make sure to like and subscribe and all the other bs notifications to try to get some unique ones. Yeah, we went over chittering. Oh, uh, what do we? There. Reckoner's bargain is played alongside deadly dispute. Absolutely, for all the value, and it is strong. Like once that, once they start chaining those things together, it's like impossible to. Um, uh, it's impossible to prevent because they draw too many cards. They have too many permanents on the battlefield, and it gets out of control. I, as a pop or fairies player, I gotta counter the first damn thing that they play. Can't let any of that stuff resolve. Never. We didn't do chittering? I thought we did chittering. Oh, chittering rats. You know what? We didn't do chittering rats. We did all the other. I remember this one. When it comes into play, target, target opponent puts a card from his or her hand on top of his or her library. You can get locked out by this stupid son of a bitch. So evil. Yeah, I got crushed by this card many times. Can you get locked out if you blink? If you have like an infinite blinker, can you get locked out by this guy? Comes into play, target opponent puts a card from top of, from his or her hand on top of his or her library. So if it's like not an instant, you could blink at upkeep. Or sorry, you can blink at the draw step every turn. That's it. The game's over. Keep putting the card that you just drew. Oh, you want to, you want to say hello, Salute? You're going to be brave. Hello, Salute. Look, it's a rat. Oh, you like hunting rats. You're a hunter. Your hunter salute. Look, you want to hunt the chittering rats? It's evil. Puts cards from my hand on top of my library. Doesn't even go to the graveyard. Oh, salute. Oh, salute. Oh, hungry 24 7 salute. Uh. He's very active this morning. Eating so much wet food these days. Marsh Mist Titan. This is a common black six generic four five four five creature and it costs X less to cast where X is your devotion to black. I like that card. I like I like car I like decks that are devoted. You go all in on blue, you go all in on white, you go all in on green, you go all in on red, or you go all in on black. Black has great payoffs. They have so many great cards. Balustrade Spy is a common? Well, I'll be damned. This is a combo card in a lot of decks between Pioneer and Modern. When enters the battlefield, target player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card, then puts those cards into their graveyard. So the whole idea is um, if you build your deck without lands, technically without lands, you can mill your entire deck. And then if you can create a combo out of those milled cards, then so be it. Could be with Thassa's Oracle. I mean, if you're wondering how you cast cards, I mean, you can do it with like zero mana artifacts. You can also use those spell lands. Let the, you know, spell that you could, it could be a creature or it could be a spell or it can be a land at the same time. It doesn't recognize those as lands though. We went over Sinkhole. It was like one of the first ones. How do you think we get this far into the... Sinkhole was like number two, I think. Ran Sack the Lab. 
black, one generic sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. Yeah, good value. Is that a new one? This had to, what, this this was only printed in Modern Horizons. Look at the top three cards of your library. Well, one of them is your hand. I guess it's like a semi-impulse sort of thing. I guess maybe it's a strange card for black. I don't know. Seems really late for a card like this to get printed. Ah, oh, Chaos! Or sorry, K Chaos, yeah, Chaos Extreme. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, tortured Existence, probably I'm late, and Evil Presence. Uh, I can't remember if we did Tortured Existence. We did. That was a really good one. Pay a black, discard creature to bring a creature back. But Evil Presence, I don't think we did. The evil. Oh, ho, 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 ho. one black enchanted land. Enchanted land is a swamp. Basically, spreading seas for black. No draw card, though. This might as well be sinkhole. It might as well be sinkhole. How many. There's another one, though. Isn't there another one? It's two mana, and if they. In, and it turns it into a swamp, and if they tap the land, it like it deals damage to them. You could have mono black Ponza. Oh, we did not see the Vasira Seer. Vasira Seer. The card I never know if I'm pronouncing correctly the entire time I've ever pronounced this card. It's also a bit of a tongue twister. So black 1-1, one, one, sack a creature, scry 1. Huge combo card, huge value. Again, usually sacrificing creatures requires some sort of cost or a tapping ability. Seer doesn't give a crap. You just constantly sack creatures. And it's a wizard! I am today's... I am today years old to find out that this thing is a wizard. Was it always a wizard? It was always a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Oh, I knew it was a vampire. I just didn't know it was a wizard. Looks like more of a witch, if anything else. Okay, we're just gonna squeeze in one classic Doom Blade. Yeah, it can also sack, it can sack itself. Sack your, sacrifice yourself, Seer. Doomblade, a classic. One black, one generic, destroy target non-black creature. This has been the, if it dies to Doomblade, then it's a fair card. Simple as that. Because this is one of the most fair removal spells in all of Magic the Gathering. What a, this was a great show today. Thank you very much for joining me giving you all your suggestions. We basically did a, uh, basically a, a mono black popper player's toolbox starter kit. Except, you know, some of those cards are so good that they are banned. But anyways, thank you very much for joining me. We do this Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank, be there or be square. Thanks so much for all the, super, the support with the Super Chats and becoming members of the channel. Let's me know that we got to keep up Coffin MTG many, many years into the future. And uh, thank you for joining me today, because without you guys, like, I, I don't I didn't even know half the cards on, on this list. This was a sweet list of cards. You guys are the, uh, the experts on re the Relentless Rats and the Grey Merchants and the Swamp Tribal. So keep brewing up those coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you at the next cup.